very good morning friends today I am there before you with a topic which you have to study in your PG semester 4 as well as in many other universities it is there in UZ also and the chapter I am talking about is Zach Derrida's structure sign and play in the discourse of the human sciences this is a critical text written by him I know that this text is not easy unless and until you have studied and you have known about one concept that concept is known as structuralism it is assumed that you know about structuralism in detail otherwise this chapter where we are leading to is post structuralism so if you do not know about structuralism's basics, it will be difficult for you to understand what this Jack Derrida is talking about in this chapter. There are two to three principles which we talk about as far as the structuralism is concerned. The first school in structuralism is given by the Ferdinand de Saussure and his concept as you know that he was a structuralist linguist and according to him language is nothing but a sign system a system that communicates in relation to the unity of the other signs like in sign there are two parts one part is the signifier and the other part is the signified suppose I say one word B O O K book the book this letter becomes the signifier and the written printed work consisting of pages like this becomes book you know so this is the signified the sound I am producing book is the signifier and the signified is this book so this is the very first call first concept now the another school says uh, like uh, what I would like to continue with Saucer that suppose I and with another example suppose I say tree T R R T R E E tree tree becomes the signifier and the thing that you assume as a tree becomes a signified so I can say very easily that signifier is having expression and signified is the concept so this is the first lesson of structuralism second is that is defined by Noam Chomsky Noam Chomsky said that structuralism posits two kind of structure one is the surface structure another is the deep structure surface structure is nothing but the spoken words and deep structure is the invisible which is inferred now in a Levi, Levi Strauss is the another school of thought in structuralism and Levi Strauss talks about binary oppositions and remind you friends here this is the crux issue because Zach Derrida in his paper has tried nothing but to destroy this concept of Levi Strauss. He does not believe in anything. What exactly is binary opposition? According to Levi Strauss, if I have to define about day, I have to know about night. If I have to define white, I have to know about black. If I have to define protagonist, I have to know about antagonist. If I have to define man, I have to define woman. Zach Derrida says, I do not believe in this binary opposition. He says that this theory leads us to a world of hierarchy. I am bound to prefer good to evil. I am bound to prefer night, day to night and likewise. So here. Always remember when I proceed to the chapter written by Zack Dorida, this binary opposition you have to keep in mind that Levi Strauss has given that and Jack Dorida tries to destroy 
try to form a new kind of concept which is beyond binary world. Now let me take you to the historical background of the essay. If you do not know the historical background, the clear purpose will be not there before you. What is the backdrop? Let me take you to the event World War II and the May 1968 revolution that happened in France. Actually in France what happened for the three to four or five or to six weeks, there was unlimited, you know, unlimited and uncontrolled turmoil and the people had become jobless and they were having a kind of revolt against the ruling system. So that unrest has produced a kind of crisis which occurred during the war, you know, the 20th century and in the world of humanities and social sciences where people has lost their complete faith in the adequacy of language to describe reality. People were confused what I am studying, whether it is leading me to the world of truth or reality or not. Now, the historical background of the essay is that Derrida wrote this chapter Structure, Sign and Play basically to present in the seminar known as the language of criticism and the sciences of man in 1966. It was organized by John Hopkins University in Baltimore and the conference brought and witnessed, witnessed philosophers like Jack Lacan, like Roland Barthes, Michel Foucault was there, of course, but you know he was not, he did not participate in the last moment. This particular essay was written in just 15 days. You know? Now, if you can understand what was the potential audience before Jack Derrida to discuss this paper, you will also have to have the clarity about you know, the standard of his writing. That is why for the university graduate students, this, is, this particular essay was meant for scholars like that who has propounded theories like that. You will have to also tune yourself up and know the basics and basics I have given about structuralism. And then this chapter will lead you to the post-structuralism. Now let me ask this question before you because why does, what does this essay do? Why was it written? What was the motive? Actually, this essay identifies the inadequate tendency of first the philosophers to denounce each other. Ferdinand de Saussure was denouncing the concept of the early theorists. He was denouncing Freudian concept. Freud was denouncing Saussurean concept. Then there was Marxist theories like Roman Jacobson. They, he was denouncing social concept. So, to have that kind of comments on the you know, languages with the politics of the structure itself, what Jack Derrida tries to term it as the structurality of the structure, he tries to denounce all kinds of philosophies which had been discussed earlier. And this essay showcases the extent and the limits of structuralism. This is the purpose, you know. Now, next one is that, what, what is the aim and the objective of the essay? The aim is to, what is structuralist aim to break the structural effect? That is to show the textual unity and coherence. This was the aim of the structuralist. But the aim of this deconstructive theory is that to show textual disunity with the concept of difference. This term you will get in the essay. And <coughs> this difference has two words in it. One word is the differ, which means not alike. And there is the other word duffa, which means to continue. This theory says that the moment I try to get the one meaning, the meaning goes, moves somewhere else. And then when I catch hold of that meaning, it further moves somewhere else. So the meaning of a word is always deferred. That is why 
Zek Derrida tries to say that there is no textual unity. There is textual disunity with, and he brought this concept of difference. The second objective ultimately is to have a philosophy without concepts. You will be surprised to know that Zek Derrida tried to denounce all kinds of existing philosophies in the world and he brought out a new concept where there is no concept. He says that everything should be without orientation, without coherence. Now, the synopsis, what exactly is there in this chapter? This chapter, Structure, Sign and Play, discusses how philosophy and social science understand structure abstractly because the structure, if I will say, I will come to that in detail. And then this chapter, Derrida is dealing with the structuralism, a type of analysis which understands individual elements of language and culture as embedded in larger structures. Suppose one concept, if I take one structure that I... Structure is what? Structure is any concept. Structure is any philosophy. A structure is any kind of ideology. Suppose one structure I take, for example, if I am, I say I am Jharkhandi, then Jack Derrida asks me if I am Jharkhandi, what else you are? Then I say I am an Indian. So being a Jharkhandi and being an Indian, both are different yet alike. So the center of my existence got changed here. And then in the further world, if I will take it further, then I can say that I am an Asian. So I'll have the third concept. What am I? I'm a Jharkhandi. Is it right? Or I'm an Indian. Is it right? Or I'm an Asian. Is it right? Or I'm an inhabitant of this planet. So this is where this, this chapter is going to pose before us. And ultimately he tries to convince that please try to drop all kinds of concepts or the structures that you load yourself, that you carry yourself. Uh, with. So this essay is interdisciplinary because Jack Derrida has also taken into custody the study of Levi, Levi Strauss anthropological concepts, bricklayer that I'll come in the later phase. And so this essay is interdisciplinary, fusing language with that of cultural anthropology. Now, if I would like to divide this chapter, this chapter will be basically divided into four to five parts. Basically, there is no fragmentation as such. But with the help of my reading time and again, I at personal level would like to divide this chapter into five segments. First one is the structure, center, then he talks about no center. The second part where he talks about if there is no structure, let there be the free play of money. And in the third segment, he's talking about if there is a free play, let one structure be broken and that what he termed as a rupture. So the rupture comes and one structure is broken and another structure evaporates, which is a structure less. There is no structure in that egg breaks into pieces then the chicken comes out so that kind of new concepts come out and entirely a different concept evolves and the fourth part he talks about a birth of new mode of thinking and this new mode of thinking is nothing but to drop and shed all kinds of previous notions and philosophies and ideologies i would time and again remind you that the structure in literature is not building or not a book or not something or anything that you know about a structure is ideologies the structure is a school of thoughts where he's basically trying to focus when he was going to read out this paper at a seminar in Baltimore. Now the fifth part is he is presenting strong arguments in favor of the birth of new mode of thinking. And if there be any another part in this essay, the short one is the conclusive that I will show you with the next you know, uh, you know, lecture. Now, in a part one, Derrida begins with a quote by Montaigne. And he quote Montaigne, we need to interpret interpretations more than to interpret things. He said, 
that we need to interpret interpretations. Suppose I say you something. Suppose I say you, I hate you. Now, what is the meaning of I hate you? Suppose I say, I hate you. One interpretation is this. When there is sound mixing into it and the culture you, through your cultural background, you know what I mean. I hate you. Another is, <laughs> I hate you. And third one is, I hate you. So these are the different meanings. So one interpretation of I hate you leads you to the another interpretation, some higher interpretation. From that higher interpretation, you lead to another interpretation and an interpretation never ends. It goes on to the infinity. Now, what is there here? So here comes a near about definition of deconstruction. When the Peter Berry, as he talks about, that reading and interpretation, they are not just reproducing what the writer thought and expressed in the text. It is not like that. What the writer thought, reading is something when I start to double my commentary. It's called doubling commentary. When something is written, writer has wrote, as a reader I am reading it. Then I am what I am doing, I am reinterpreting it and I am restructuring it as for my experience is there. So it's already kind of where I like to try to construct a pre-existing non-textual reality to lay alongside the text. So the process still here is reconstructive. When I read something, I start to, construction was there, this construction came into my hand, then as a reader, when I am reading it, I am reconstructing. But Zeg Derrida says, no, this is not the end. A critical reading should not reconstruct, rather taking you back to the Roland Bass where he's right, the dead of the author. And Jack Derrida also believes that a critical reading requires a complete production of a new text. Means when I am reading this text, I am not reconstructing it, rather I am producing a new text out of it because a complete new meaning is ingrained into it. I am producing a different kind of text at the same time it is parallelly going. So as in a Gen philosophy, there is a statement that the moment, uh, what is the first principle? The first principle of Gen philosophy is that the moment I speak it, it becomes the second principle. Likewise, when I am reading a text, I am reading a new text because I have given a new kind of meaning into it. I have broken all kind of structures and why did I did it? Because I had a different experience of the words and the sounds in my life. That is why I'll have a different interpretations. This is what he said, that there is no doubling commentary. A critical reading goes for the redoubling commentary and it is not reconstructive. Here it is deconstructive. Producing a text entirely into a different text is now nothing we call it a reconstructive. It is rather deconstructive. This is what he meant. And then, so it is often referred to as reading text against the grains or the reading the text itself. As Terry Eagleton would like to quote that the purpose of knowing the text as it cannot know itself. The text cannot know itself. We start to know itself as a reader. So the deconstructive reading uncovers the unconscious rather than the conscious dimension of the text. So this is where we discover the unconscious of the text which is not visible, which is tacit, which is down underneath and is varying from one person to another person. So Zach Derrida begins his text with a reference to one recent event. And even the term he questions is itself a question mark. What exactly event stands for me? But I am telling you my students, he's referring to three events that I'll be talking about later on. But the event for him 
is the changes brought into the world of criticism by different kind of philosophers who were producing a new kind of a structure, new kind of thought, new kind of philosophies in the world of critical criticism. So he is referring by the word event to those events. Now, the event as he discusses involves changes in structuralism, structure in particular, and the event is the question mark that if there is a structure, what is the structurality of this structure? This what is the quality of this structure? What is the structurality of the structure? The moment this question come into come forth, that becomes the event. And I will, as I have said you, the Sigmund Trad, Levi Strauss, uh, De Saussurean theories had contradicted the previous philosophies and the, and this Z Derrida meant with the word event to those events where where these philosophers have broken down the previous concepts. Now the question before is how had the structurality of a structure been limited before the event? How the structurality of the structure were limited before the event that he is talking about, before these philosophers came up to denounce the theories, it was through the process of being assigned a stabilizing center. Because before this deconstructive theory, all the theories have a structure in it because of any structure is dependent upon one center. There is one center around which the meaning revolves. If there is, this is what a structuralist believe, as I had said, told you in the previous, you know, discussions and the opening discussions. So if I break the center of the meaning, it breaks. Now, how, how should I this, uh, break the center? Suppose I give you the example right now. If I give one word hot, what is the meaning of hot? Without binary, you will say that which is, which is not cold is hot. But here Zex Jarida says, Ki for me, if I am a citizen of a tropic of cancer, hot for me is 30 degrees Celsius. It's not cold. For the Saharan people, the same hot changes its definition and the hot means 50 degrees Celsius. Now, if we go to the Antarctic, anything around 5 to 10 degrees Celsius, that hot is there for them. So, where is the binary of positions? And where is the center of the meaning? Center is changing itself. The definition of hot is changing depending upon the places where I am. So, that is where the structurality of the structure is broken. And what is the center? Let me explain it. Center gives structure its structurality. Also, it orients, balances, and organizes the structure. And at the same time, it inhibits play and allows a limited discourse to take play within the structure. But this is what was broken. This is, I'll, I'll discuss it further. But suppose one, there is a preamble, you know, in the Indian constitution, which you can take as a structure. So this preamble has also one meaning. And this preamble is the guiding principle of the constitution. If any changes come into or amendments come into constitution, preamble is not going to lose its meaning. So this is where the center is, is, is playing its role. Now, now, another characteristic of the center is that it is the part of the structure, as I said, the preamble, yet at the same time it is unaffected by the changes taking place in it. Therefore, the center that leads coherence and structurality of the structure, at the same time it escapes it. Like for example, I said preamble, there are changes going in the constitution. With the preamble, which is a guiding principle of the constitution, there is one meaning of the constitution. Even if there will lot of change and amendments will go, preamble keeps itself aside from all the changes and constitution itself has a different and manifold meanings into it. So this is how we say, you know, that center participates as well as center escapes. Now, 
This is a paradox paradoxical concept of center being the both inside and outside of the structure. That is the center that governs the center skips it totally at the same time. Like the concept of God, we believe that one of the major factor or the center of this world or the structure of this world is God around which this concept everything is built the churches the mosques of society even the scientific revolutions happen with keeping God in the center but we know that God is absent from the play of the human life as well as he is part of our life one cosmos which is manifested outside is also supposed to be God and another where the God is nowhere in the outer he is in the inside inner world so he is there in the world and he is yet not there in the world mila bhi tu hai zuda bhi tu hai sanam bhi tu hai khuda bhi tu hai where the center you will find and this is called the transcendental signifier there comes the eternal proclamation that center is not the center this is where jack derrida is trying to pull us that center is not the center because center is changing it's differing its meaning it's changing its meaning with the place time and location and our different cultures our different understandings one simple word has different interpretations so earlier what were the concepts which were there in the center like he talks about in this book he talks about essence he talks about existence he talks about substance he talks about subject and he talks about con structures like consciousness of conscience or the god the man sometimes man were in the center of the study and the metaphysical concepts like like this a structuralist was believing that a man is a social animal one definition from the social science but jack derrida asked what a man is a man a social animal or man is a political animal or man is a part of the human resources or a man is a part of you know you know in a different world or a man is uh, you know is having a different kind of it's a evolution of uh, homo sapiens from hero, um, homo erectus is having a different kind of cranial capacities there are various kinds of propositions about man so this man definition is changing from one center to the another center there is no particular definition what it is against what a structuralist believed now uh, so this no center uh, according to derrida is a center cannot substitute itself it cannot be repeated so once it was believed center is changed center cannot repeat itself it brings forth the new center so the for the first time in the history of a structure it was necessary to begin thinking that there was no center at all and there is an infinite number of sign substitutions that came into play and this is called in the absence of center play finally had its chance when you extract the center out of a meaning of a word play starts to begin there a lot of meanings came into play like one letter is there letter like i write letter this letter has a different kinds of interpretation one letter is you know uh it means in letter that i write one letter is write application one is a formal letter one is the informal letter one letter means the alphabet letter so there are various meanings you know in french if you go it's called billet do there is a love letter also so letter gets different kinds of meanings so play starts into the scene and this is the second part of the essay so what does play consist of data describes how once there was no center language invaded the scene and everything became discourse and that is why if you read this you will say discourse of the human human sciences so discourse starts to happen when the word loses its center when it starts to get from one meaning to another meaning it leads to it's leading to the infinity the discourse start to happen so instead of a structure of concepts or philosophy there was only collection of science language you know so it the signified became indistinguishable from the signifier and the play became a play of signification 
that is words could have any meaning it is infinite it is boundless like so it once the place start to happen it leads us the world beyond science and signified and signifier it leads us to full discourse now as you can see that the factors governing the play to get epistemically epistemologically shifted now examining the history of a structure like his structure once again i would like to tell you that the structure is nothing but it is different kinds of school of thought in literature or the philosophies is talking about or the concepts so derrida elaborates that one center gets replaced by another like elizabethan period got replaced by metaphysicals if you are a student of english literature you might have been knowing that there was a pre chaucerian period then there was elizabethan period which was different from the 15th century period then elizabethan concept and the writers changed the concept of writing in the age of reason and they became logical metaphysicals came into being where the there was association of sensibility into them then there were neo classicists who talked about only you know who about the reason only and then against it the another structure came into the field of literature and the gamut of writers came who talked about romantic revival they revived the things which were being written in the 16th century and then there came the victorian which was against this romantic school of thought so one structure is completely broken and center shifts itself and different kind of structures crop up this is what it is meant now next derrida surveys the entire history of the concept of structurism or a structure up to the recent which is still mysterious and he found that there are lot of ruptures into that and one center for another is shifting itself so never there was a structure without a center full of nothing but play so what types of centers were there so far as i have already talked about in the previous you know uh, discussions that it it was there like subconsciousness god man and all so these concepts being changed and you no know, the concept of god changed into a renaissance human being so now the third part of basic comes with the rupture coming into the scene so defining this event that leads to disruption of the structure the concept of rupture is discussed the rupture literally means some breaks some cracks you know so that comes about a point when a structurality of a structure is examined if i start to study the structurality of the structure only then this comes into mind and hereby comes a state when there is no center conclusively no locus so at this moment with the removal of the center infinite takes place as i have discussed and then it came into part of discourse as i have it was shown in a slide you know so here comes the structure sign and play in the discourse of the human sciences where and how does this decentering this thinking of the structurality of a structure occur as in the previous discussion i had talked about that i had discussed earlier that but uh, there are three names in particular now nietzsche nietzsche was one philosopher who has broken the earlier structure and he questioned the power of representation and concepts to really convey truth so the nietzsche has really challenged the previous concept of truth and of the metaphysical age as for example uh, in the metaphysical age i would like to remind you the concept was that this total universe is is a geocentric it was assumed one thought or the structure of concept was that this the entire universe in the center is the earth and the sun revolves around the earth this is called the world was geocentric once galileo invented telescope then he said come on what rubbish this is absolutely rubbish this structure of thought is absolutely rubbish this is not which is earth in the center rather it is the sun which is in the center and he showed us that the earth is moving around the sun 
For that he was penalized also. But the truth was in question because churches were telling to the humanity that the earth is like father of this universe. That concept was demonized and you say question such kind of you know concepts of uh, you know metaphysical questions where everything was leading to ultimate truth. Now the second which bound Jack Derrida to bring out a new concept was this Freudian concept because Freud also challenged the previous structures because before Freud in everything in the center was our consciousness it was believed that this total world is governed by our consciousness because our observation is a slave to our conscious mind but Sigmund Freud says no this is wrong conception and he said consciousness is just one tenth of the iceberg dipped in water rather nine tenth which is submerged the unconscious or the subconscious should be in the center because that subconscious decides our real nature our real you know behavior so from consciousness the structure of consciousness was completely shaken and broken by Sigmund Freud and Jack Derrida said if that is broken your concept is also it should be broken because if you are breaking one center you are fixing to the new structure if you are breaking one structure you are going to talking about another structure one structure will lead to the another structure and it will be a kind of chain so the third let us break it. So the third influence upon Jack Derrida after Sigmund Freud was Heidegger. And Heidegger was coming to criticize a concept idea of being as presence. The idea of being as presence is nothing but entities are understood with regard to a definite mode of time at the present. And he said the word being itself is very confusing because being has two words. Be means something has already happened, something has become. Ing means continuation. So he said ki our presence never ends. So if that kind of ideal concept came into existence, these three concepts, uh, Jack Derrida was very much influenced and he said, if by your concept, your structure, earlier structures were shaken and broken, then why should we go for one structure? Because your theory is told to the world that no structure is final. So, stating this, you are coming with one your own structure. Your structure should also be broken and let the world be free of all kinds of structure. Now, one way with the arbitrary relation between the signifier and signified was broken. And, and there are data talks about the reduction of binary between the signifier and signified. They said, if I have to give the new concept, I'll have to reduce the binary oppositions. And the two ways for doing this is the traditional way of submitting to the traditional way of submitting to the arbitrary relation between signified and signified. And second is to completely be done away with all kinds of binary arbitrary relation between the signifier and the signified. I would like to take you friends one quote here I am reminding of that in Romeo and Juliet Shakespeare had written that what's in a name that which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet in act two scene two in Romeo and Juliet he said so if I call a rose by any name it will be rose anyway so the rose that is signified has no connection with the signifier. A rose, the hell, it does not have any relation. He does is least bothered about what we, what the sig, no, uh, sign I am allotting to it, what the signifier is attached with it. Rose has no relation. So I am here. This is what Dexter does says. Let us, let us diminish. Let us, you know, reduce the binary between the signifier and the signified. And this is what he called reciprocal destroyer. Now a birth of new mode of thinking came into free play. And Jack Javida does not assert the possibility of thinking outside such terms like a structure. Any attempt to undo a particular concept is likely to become caught up in the terms which the concept depends on. That is why I say 
drop everything. The moment I am caught with a concept, I am depending upon it. And if I am depending upon it, and depending upon, based upon this concept, if I am formulating a new concept, there is no use of producing a new concept because a new concept is ultimately depend upon the previous concept. So if you try to undo, as for example, the centering concept of unconscious consciousness, I am taking you with the Sigmund Freud with another center which is unconsciousness or which is subconsciousness. So if I destroy the concept of consciousness, I am building up a new concept of subconsciousness. Once again, the structure is there. Now, someday in the future, someone will come and say, no, it is not the subconscious. It is, it is uh, something new term, sub, 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 subconsciousness. There will be new coinage, maybe. Or as there was center in Indian philosophy that the purpose of if you ask an ascetic of India, a sand of India, what is the purpose of life? Then for him, you will say the purpose of life is the attainment of Atma, attainment of soul. So one center is there. Then came Karl Marx into the world. And if we will ask the same question, what is the purpose of life? He will say, it is not attainment of Atma, it is the belly, it is the stomach which is the purpose of life. Then after Karl Marx, if suppose someone will ask from a Sigmund Freud, what is the basic purpose of life? Then Sigmund Freud says, it is not attainment of Atma, it is not uh, the fulfillment of belly, but it is two inches below the belly, that is the libido. So we can say that one structure is tarnishing the previous structure and propounding a new structure, new meaning to the world. And Zeg Derrida says, come on, we should drop all kinds of structure and we should not go for searching any truth. And there should be a free play and there should be no binary oppositions. Truth should not be defined by falsehood. Truth may be defined by untruth or something in between that. There should be, it should be very tacit. The moment I try to define it, as I said, then Zen philosophy says, the moment, what is the first principle? First principle is that the moment I speak the first principle, it becomes the second principle. So, Jake Derrida now once gave up this concept, that there is a urgent need of producing new thought, new way of thinking, he is giving, advocating two facts before the world and he is putting up his arguments in his new mode of thinking. And one, he is trying to denounce or he is trying to break the concept of binaries. As I had said earlier, binary is very important concept of a structuralist. So, the structuralist like Le Levi Strauss has given binaries of nature and culture. One, we will see that Jack Derrida is trying to destroy this concept of binary or between nature and culture and second advocacy he is trying to do is the he is trying to denounce the binaries proposed by Levi Strauss of bricolage and exilia. Let me see. Now what is uh, the uh, deconstruction of Strauss of binary nature and culture? Strauss has clearly written that where anything that is spontaneous is nature. Good. And against nature, the binary that he established is that anything that is acquired is culture. So, he said, according to Strauss, that this binary decides our world. Nature is something which is spontaneous and culture is something which is acquired. So, culture if I have to define what natural is, I have to define what cultural is, because cultural is the antithesis of nature. Sigmund, uh, this then uh, Jack Derrida asks, okay, fine. Now let me discuss one scandal into your concept. And what is a scandal? He asks to Levi Strauss, do you believe that incest love is natural? Well. It is natural. So, then the cult in the cultural concept, there should be no acceptance of incest love, right or wrong? Yes. 
there should be no acceptance of is uh, this uh, uh, incest love but here jack derrida said ki come on there are cultures across the universe which accepts the concept of incest love as well as it rejects the concepts of incest love in their culture at the same time they are accepting there are many indian mythologies which we see that even lord krishna or many other figures where they are mentioning that they married their own sisters in confusion or something there are many stories also mythological stories also is running there or in practice also that there in many religions which give acceptance to the uh, marriage between the you know, family relations so according to the nature this is natural culture should not go for this incest love but at the same time they are going hand in hand so this is the scandal you found ki your this binary should immediately be dropped either it should be natural according to you or should be not accepted in culture but we see that it is naturally accepted and culturally not rejected in both ways it is accepted so he says ki we should drop this binary now the second concept that he tries to found that of concept of bricolage he said let me tell you friends what is bricolage bricolage is nothing but is a kind of assemblage of different things in a wild way and then bringing it together to form something new so uh, bricolage is a method and a person doing it is known as bricolia so borrowing this terminology from this levi strauss essay the savage mind a bricolier is a person who uses the means at his disposal in and in a desired permutations and combinations he formed something to get out an end goal strauss said that a brick br- uh, this uh, bricklayer is nothing but the mythological narrative writers and uh, the scientific study writers are just like ingenia so we see that bricklayers is uh, where the strauss related them with the mythological narratives where they are the a wild imaginations go on and mythology is narrated by the assemblages of unrelated unconventional things whereas the human sciences or the scientific study is just like an engineer works which is very systematic so you can see that there is a cycle which is a bricolage cycle where the so it, uh, there are different kinds of wheels into it you see and there are different kind of paddles into it and it has been formed so according to levi strauss it is said that the this uh, designer of a bricolage is just like a mythological narrative writers where as a uh, proper cycle is a product of a uh, engineer but i ask you friends one question along with jack derrida that if i am a bricolage and if i had not an engineering sense within me can this could be a shape like this no here once again he dropped this uh, you know break this concept of of uh, is levi strauss that uh, your thesis uh, is not agreeable because if i am a bricklayer at the same time i have to be engineer also because i have to know where i am going to take this word because rather i have to become more creative uh, engineer in that way so when the structure of engineer is broken down by a bricklayer and the concept of bricklayer is concept is broken down by the concept of engineer we find there is no center there is no center so that is why that is why in conclusive section derrida observes that there are two ways to interpret a structure sign and play one way aims to decipher the absolute truth and a white play whereas the another way aims to affirm play he says that there should be play between the science and the structure so so the first way was to dominant it was dominant throughout human history and the second is only emerging now so the play is possible if we can forego our need for truth if we forsake our need of the truth the play can happen 
it is possible then to have a philosophy without concepts, without orientation and without coherence. And this is what was the purpose of Jack Derrida. He said we should not move into the binaries, let there be play between the signifier and signifieds, let there be open play, let there be as many as many as we can have, let when we study this book, I as a reader have to deconstruct a book, rather if I am reading a book, I am producing one book in itself, this is called deconstruction. Thank you very much friends, it was all about in this chapter and I hope that I'll produce another uh, video which will be based upon separately from structuralism if you miss something into it. But I was just focusing what was there in this 14 to 15 pages of essay. Thank you very much.